take a second to turn to the person next to you and say hello, shake their hand, give them a high five. We're Londoners. Don't always do that with each other. This is a day on the self, on the psychology of the self. What an interesting question. Who are we? Why are we here? What are we here for? Big question. So take a couple of minutes to just write down. I would like you to try and describe yourself in a couple of sentences. You got pens and paper, or if not, just you know, write it on your phone. Have a think about that. Who are you? For Jung, the psyche is comprised of three distinct levels. Okay, consciousness, the personal unconscious, and the collective unconscious. Well, I, I think the point is that, that, that uh, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about what I'm saying when I say the self is an illusion because people think illusion means there's nothing there. Well, no, the, the word illusion means it's not what it seems. And so I am not denying that we all have this compelling experience of the self. You, I hope you're having it because I'm having it. Um, but what I think it is and what it appears to me as this sort of integrated, coherent individual with free will and, and is, is actually illusory. That's what I'm going to argue. It's not what it seems. And what about the ego? Like, what is that? This is the day we're going to be looking at the kind of the ego. But what is the ego? There isn't actually necessarily a settled consensus about what the ego is. When we speak of consciousness, we are speaking about mainly the ego, right? If you look to the diagram, the ego is at the center of consciousness. Brains evolved as a way of processing the external world and then interpreting that and generating internal models so that you can navigate around the world. So I was thinking about what is the ego. I came up with some ideas. First of all, self-awareness, right? It's the sense of I, the sense that I am here, this is me. And, but then who is this me? I'm just really interested in topics to do with psychology, philosophy, spirituality, the science behind it. Um, I just, yeah, I've always been fascinated with the topic. So that was immediately when I saw the, the name of the whole event, A Day on the Self, that was immediately very appealing to me and it just, yeah, instantly grabbed my attention. Okay, for Jung, this is the center of consciousness, the function of which is to regulate the personality, right? It is related to issues of personal identity, cognition, and reality testing. But there are many living things which don't think. There are many living things which don't have brains. Uh, think about the plant world, think about amoebas, think about very simple organisms. Also, this body and physical sensations, I am hungry. I am excited, though they also change all through our life as well. They're very knowledgeable about their subjects. So they're getting high level quality of lectures, and uh, he obviously knows Young very well. And Young is someone that you know I'm not, I've not studied. So it's very interesting to hear and start to understand the basics of what Jungian psychology is all about. So how do we know that we exist? A quick thought experiment. I exist because I'm different from you. There's some entity, some conglomeration that makes me specifically me. Well, central nervous system is, is what I prefer to use, but brain is the common, uh, uh, the common language. The central nervous system, of course, extends right throughout the body. Wherever there's senses, it comes together, it's a process, and the human, we happen to have this, this thing. And we're a story about who we are, about our past, about our future, about the nature of reality. But that story is also always changing. He's very engaging, very interesting. Um, I like the fact that he took the time to ask the audience questions and gave really, really insightful answers. Consciousness mediates an engagement with the unconscious, right? Um, this is a central theme. It's key to all the talking therapies. But at the same time, it's so important to emphasize because when people begin to think of Jung, they think immediately of the collective unconscious, the archetypes, mythology, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. People talk about the brain and the stomach. You know, the gut brain. Have you heard that as well? Uh, I mean, I don't want to go there because there's a lot of uh, argument about what that is. But certainly, the central nervous system is spread throughout the body. So all the information coming in through the senses is is transduced into electrical chemical impulses, which is then registered. So it's really the ego is a kind of story or a strategy that we build up over time, starting from when we're born. I found the speakers equally very engaging. I think that all of them, they were clearly very passionate about what they were speaking about and about their own personal experiences. I think that they were very honest about those and it was making it more of a relatable topic. So there's a proclivity to jump to that extreme end without noting that actually consciousness itself played such an integral 
part to young psychology, especially in the individuation process. In terms of where information is stored, yeah, there's information stored in your gut, there's information stored in your heart, but really the, the sorts of information that we think about in terms of cognition, primarily in the cerebellum. A network of relationships with other beings, uh, with our family, with our culture, perhaps with other species, perhaps with uh, spiritual beings, if we, if, we, if we have those kinds of beliefs. What I find good about the weekend university is it's very easy to access. You know, you can come, it's very flexible, you come when you like, you think the topics you like, and the, the quality of the lectures is at least at the level of, of university lectures, in my experience, because you're getting the real top experts in their fields. Young would say that, you know, with a, a complex, usually, but not always, it's tied to some trauma that you've experienced. Not always, right, because he talks about positive complexes as well. In many ways, our brains process the external world and uh, create simulations of it. And it creates models of the external world in order that we can navigate the world. And it's built up in response to certain challenges. Because we're self-respective, because we have this awareness of I am here, this person in this particular body at this particular time, we also have the awareness that I'm separate. I'm separate from you. I'm separate from these other people. This is my first lecture that I've been to so far. I think it's a really, really good idea. Um, it also gives me the opportunity to psychology um, having not done any but usually, in terms of negative complexes, it's tied to some trauma. It's usually tied to some real physical relationship that we have with others, okay? And it's an emotional reaction to that actual real experience. But we also have a multitude of information inside our heads in terms of the processes which we act upon. I, I think it generates internal models. And to cut to the chase, I'm gonna argue the self is an internalized summary of information that we use to interface with the complexity of the parallel world. And the ego very much craves security. It wants control, it wants sense of security, stability and happiness. But in a world of transience where everything is changing all the time. I'm very interested in psychology and philosophy in general. Uh, it's not something that I, I studied when I, was, when I was younger, so to have the opportunity to kind of explore new subjects is really interesting. Uh, I think it's sort of given me a bit of a taste for, for those new subjects and, uh, and given me that kind of impetus to go on and uh, do a bit of self-study as well and learn about new things.